Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Owl Bear Soup. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so Rich, your 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 background's a little bit different today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we decided to uh, to take a birthday uh, trip, and so so last week uh, went and got the the wonderful COVID test. Which I don't know if you had the pleasure of a, a toothbrush plunged up your nostrils, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, got marked as negative and, and now we're out to sunny Palm Springs for the day or for the weekend. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah no, I, I, uh, I, I, I have not experienced that. So, um, I, I, <laughs> I know, at, I know at some point I'm going to have to, but, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's not high on my list of things. Okay. Here's the thing here. And I wish that this was part of the promotional literature. Are you ready? Like I was scared of them for a while. And then here is exactly what happened. We both got tested at the same time. Uh, you stick this up your nose. It's a, like a, a brush, like a scrub brush. Um, you pull it out, you immediately sneeze, and then you laugh. <laughs> <Like that's>, <laughs> <laughs> and you do it to the other one. Uh, it was ridiculous and super easy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. Well, uh, happy birthday, Laser. Uh, yes. And uh, yeah, it's awesome that you're you're getting out for the weekend. I I am I am also kind of taking it easy for these this week so mm -hmm. it's 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 pretty nice and uh yeah. you know i've i've gotten a fair amount of destiny playing in yet with the new expansion uh and you know not to rub it in too much but it's really <laughs> awesome i got in what i could uh before we yeah. left probably a little little more than i should have because i'm excited uh, it's yeah, a new yeah. story and it's very cool yeah, we're gonna have a lot of cool stuff to explore when you get back into town. Um, mm -hmm. All right, well, let's. Uh, you know, our our topic of the day is going to be let's uh, let's build an adventure uh, revolving around festivals and fairs. Uh, mm -hmm. This this adventure can be many different things, but we'll we'll kind of yeah. work through it with chat and uh, and see where we end up with this adventure. Uh, but in the meantime, but first, let's talk about. Uh, do we have any news items that we want to hit on before we get into the topic of the day? Wow. I, you know, we were talking about this. I, I didn't have a ton. And then suddenly it was like, oh, yeah, a lot of stuff has actually happened this week. Um, I've got one. It's a little lengthy. Oh. Okay. You want to do any quick hits first? Because I want to dive into a book. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Here, I'll do three, four real quick hits. Uh, so real quick. Uh, Renegade Game Studios is releasing details on their Power Rangers themed deck building game. It uh, it is competitive. Uh, you are playing Power Rangers and you're trying to take down villains. That's awesome. Also, oh yeah, that's right. And you actually brought this up to me. Renegade Games has taken over the World of Darkness for mm -hmm. RPGs. That's fantastic. Uh, on the D&D &D side of things, they are producing 2D miniature sets uh, starting with... Um, uh, da, 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 the uh, Demon of the Mad Mage. They're going to be rolling out some of those because there's a great oh, wow. variety of miniatures for that one. Um, in addition to that, uh, WizKids is also going to be putting out War Machines, so a trebuchet and a catapult, I believe. Um, Ooh, that's cool. Now, I'm excited yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah, there's no pictures yet that I've seen, so I'd, mm -hmm. I I didn't want to go too much into detail on this. And like you said, I'm, I'm, I'm hitting these fast, so... Uh, Sage, uh, there's a new Sage Advice Compendium rollout with some of the new stuff that's going to be coming from Tasha's to kind of clear things up as well as clearing up mm -hmm. certain rules. A uh, specific rule is, that uh, comes up is Green Flame Blade now requires a weapon that is of 15 copper pieces or more silver pieces or something. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a really cool breakdown of the changes to those two cantrips. I think DM David posted about it, but yeah. they both added the fact that they, they have a range, but they added self, mm -hmm. um, which means there are certain spells and feats that won't work together with it anymore because yeah. it targets you. And so there's a good breakdown about how those things will change for, for your favorite gish out there. Yeah, it, it mostly affects warlocks. Uh, warlocks Ooh. are going to be the ones that are going to be having issues with this with their uh, what is it, the shadow blade or whatever. Yeah, uh, those won't work. Uh -huh. That won't work. Um, it's questionable whether the pack blade would work, um, but I think the pack blade is typically an item you buy and then you convert it to your pack blade. So I think you're okay there. Yes, right. Um, 
but that was kind of one of the major questions I saw on Reddit was was asking about the pack blade. And while everyone kind of agreed with me on that, there was a few people like, well, I, this is partially to make sure that uh, warlocks just aren't the end all be all of Gish. So Which makes sense. Yeah, yeah, but there, yeah, just a little tiny change to that wording, and uh, that's going to end up to a couple different rules. So people should be checking their feet. It's weird that we get like a a nerf like that. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, right. But I think it's good. I think it's I think it's a good call, um, and and specifically for that shadow blade, I got to remember what name it is. I'll probably remember it. I like, think it's shadow blade, the spell, okay. right? So that does two d eight yeah. psychic damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just it, that's such a powerful spell already. Putting another spell mm -hmm. on top of that. Um, all right, and then uh, let's see here. So along with the uh, sage advice compendium being updated, there's also the um. Uh, the playtest, the most recent playtest document from North Arcana, you can now go and do the survey for those uh, last few um, subclasses they put out. Yeah, which is good. Those are the, the dragon ones, which uh, we both like. I liked a lot. Yeah. I won't speak yeah. for you. <laughs> yeah, no, I liked them. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they were great. They were a lot of fun. Um, I'm really curious to find out what book those are coming out for. I still say it's a Magic the Gathering crossover. Um, I want it to be all about Nicol Bolas, right? The the super dragon, planeswalker deity thing. I don't know. Yeah, uh, that would be. I, fun. I'm thinking a, a a Draconomicon style book where we highlight yeah. the different dragons in the Forgotten Realms, um, but uh, we, only time will tell, I suppose. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh my gosh, you just you just reminded me this week. Um, my students at third level at the Academy of Adventures, and yeah. one of them chose to take the Rune Knight. Um, which is coming out in a you know perfected version next week with Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, but they're using the Unearthed Arcana version right now. Holy cow, mm -hmm. is it fun to see that kid's like eyes light up as they do the most ridiculous things in the world. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, one of the runes is a reaction, and it's if someone hits you, you can say like, hey, I'd like to charm you right now, and uh, <laughs> which is it was odd and... <laughs> It only lasts for a minute, but everybody kind of stops as they become your friend for a whole minute. And it led to a very weird scene where the, the solo villain attacks with this huge hit and then is like, wait, why are we fighting? What's going on? And they were like, hey, can we like see your sword for a second? <laughs> and they like disarmed this character and then they all got set. And that, when the minute ended, full ambush. Oh, that's awesome. Mm. It was very fun for those kids to like beat that encounter in the most ridiculous way possible. <laughs> Oh, that's so good. So, so good. I'm very excited for that book. We've talked about it, and I know we're going to review it in detail next yep. week, right? I believe next week, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. It should be out very shortly. But uh, but those subclasses, I'm so excited to see how they have tuned them because, you know, like like you were saying, I think they're going to be a little stronger, and I'm super excited for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, 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 I've actually already talked to my party uh, that I run D&D &D for about it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to have an opportunity to level their characters. And when they level, they're going to be able to rebuild and, and, and adjust for some of the options that are available in in that book. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm seeing a lot of people decide how they're going to approach it, whether it's going to be like very piecemeal. You know, we'll, we'll add one option, we'll add another option. But uh, I like full rebuild days. Those are fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of my my idea. So long as like the characters basically stays the same. Um, mm -hmm. We we have one person in our oh. on our squad who's using one of the Unearthed Arcana versions of the Warlock class that was put out, and they've totally revamped it. Um, okay, is it the genie? So, no, it was the it was it was the one that was kind of like extra Cthulhu. -y. Like, there's the normal oh. Cthulhu one, then there's the extra the lurker Cthulhu -y. from the deep. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There we go. The lurker from that the deep. That one's very fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so he's 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 probably gonna have to do a little bit of rebuilding, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think uh, it's gonna be fun. I use that one as a villain recently as well, just because it's very fun to just be like, and now there's a spectral tentacle smacking you around. Yep. <laughs> yeah, the, the spectral tentacle has turned out to be really really handy uh, mm -hmm. because it has this ability to reduce damage. So in a very oh. you know, a very dungeon crawly adventure, it's nice to be able to yeah. occasionally like have your your tentacle go whoop and you know take away some of that damage yeah that was very fun most of my kids when i used it against them as a villain were like well i attack the tentacle and i had to be suddenly oh i have to okay um <laughs> let's, 
how, say it as resistance and this many hit points because I don't want it to be that bad and it can resummon. It's <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm the, excited the, the, to see the new version. Yeah. The player version, however, isn't a valid target, and it's like, oh, oh okay. yeah, yeah. But it yeah, does, it, but go. you know, at at, le at level nine, it doesn't really do that much damage where it needs to be that mm -hmm. tough. So, anyway, sure. sorry. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, you mentioned you had uh, you had a book you wanted to talk a book or two. I did. I wanted to take a quick look at Eberron Confidential um, by one Keith Baker. Um, I've been excited about this book for a little bit. And what it does is it takes the idea of secrets from Rime of the Frostmaiden mm -hmm. and applies them to Eberron, right? We, we talked about that system. And uh, I think overall, while it's a very cool addition to the game, I wanted it to go a little bit further. And uh, in this book, Keith goes a little bit further. <laughs> oh, good. Um, so first off, there's a whole bunch of secrets. There's ways to implement them, whether you, because they are going to be character based. So it's like, do I, I'm not going to, maybe I'll hand them out at random, or maybe I'll let you look at the list, choose from some and get a random one from that list or deal you five options, pick one, things like that. Ways to be really player, you know, get player buy-in for these things. But, uh, but what I like most about them is not only is there the list of secrets for every single one, there is at least a paragraph written about what the DM can do with that secret in the future to kind of activate it and bring it back into the story. Right, uh, Rhyme of the Frostmaiden has these moments where mm -hmm. your secret is going to come out and it's kind of, it's almost like emergent gameplay. You just, you, you get scared like, oh no, we're going to go to my old pirate ship. Oh no. Um, and in this one, I think it's really focused because the DM has to write these secrets into their campaign that already exists. So I just think it's a cool addition. It's a cool way to do it. And most of these you could put into any game you wanted. Um, oh, that's awesome. They're, they're split up into a couple sections. We have our um, occupational hazards, which mm -hmm. I like. I'll go through one in a second. Then secret identities. Oh, Ooh, it's very good. Won't give those secrets away. <laughs> um, twists and tragedies. Secrets of Sharn. So that's very focused on Sharn and Eberron. And then birthrights. Um, and some of those birthright as well. Like there's some, some yeah. nobility rights. There's some dragon mark stuff in there as well. But uh, like one of the occupational hazards that I like a lot is earworm. And first of all, it is a prerequisite. Most of these do. This one is your background cannot be entertainer. <laughs> <laughs> um and uh the background or the the secret is you know you know that song you hear all the time well i wrote it and then someone stole it and now every time i hear it like i i'm very sad um, oh no and i know <laughs> and there's questions in here like what is the song what is you know who wrote it what's important what's going on who stole it things like that um which is fun because then you as the player get to write that stuff and the dm gets to use it but uh, for taking the secret, you also get proficiency in performance and with one musical instrument. So oh, nice. not only is it a secret, but it gives you a boon that replaces some of the things. You're a quasi entertainer just by having the secret. <laughs> nice. Uh, and it wouldn't overlap because that's how the prerequisites work. There's a few that give you, you know, some small cantrips. And for those, you can't be a spellcaster because that would just be doubling up you can you know jump into it later but at the start no no <laughs> nice nice yeah no that that sounds like a a interesting and cool dynamic to kind of add to the player creation process and as well mm -hmm. as like writing for specific players because once you kind of give them uh you know th those kinds of tools to 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 evolve their characters with it's it's just going to make for much more rich and and interesting characters and stories that you can mm -hmm. tell right because suddenly with that one, you know, if I go into the DM tips, right, this is this is pretty interesting. Like your character wrote this song that everybody loves. And even though they don't know you're the one who did it, what if they do someday? What if they figure out mm -hmm. that you are this songwriter? Um, you know, maybe at first level, you can't take on that bard who stole the story. But someday right. you can work to make that come out and, you know. It's a cool like fame boost that you would get as well. Yeah, which I think is fun. So yeah, what was so what was the prerequisite? You can't be a an entertainer. Oh, background. Okay, okay. Right. Well, so well, so maybe. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> oh no no no! You're great. I was I was just thinking like 
yeah, no, that 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 seems like a lot of fun for uh, you know, a bard, right? Be, taking that mm-hmm. as a bard, or, or even like if if not as a bard, but as like something else, charisma based, so that eventually mm-hmm. you're like, you know what? Finally, I I'm just gonna gonna do it. I'm I'm gonna take this level of bard, and I'm gonna go after my, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, my my uh, competitor. Ooh, mm-hmm. thanks for uh, thanks for the gift subs, Crow of Gould. Yeah, Jonathan. Crow's back. Welcome. <laughs> so, yeah, I love uh, this because, like, this would be perfect for a bard, but also, like, it would be perfect for, I don't know, a fighter who's charismatic, who just right. gave up and was like, yeah, I wrote that song, someone stole it, and I said, okay, the bard's life's not for me. Maybe I have some charisma because I'm going into, like, a battle master sort of thing. I don't know. But yeah. um, I've used it instead to, you know, just be charming. I get proficiency in performance anyway, so someday I'm still gonna have a high performance score that I'm gonna be able to show off. So I, I like these secrets. I think they're fun. Um, you can still collaborate with other characters. That's not a big deal. You can hold on to them for a while, but they seem a little bit more focused on like the story is gonna build, you know, instead of I'm gonna find myself in a situation where my secret must come out, it's now a little bit more there's a moment like the secret can't come out just yet. I'm not strong enough, but someday it's coming yeah. in. And I love that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's awesome. And that's you know, that's a very Keith style of writing too, mm-hmm. where where, you know, it it's so much putting the story first and forward and and, mm-hmm. and giving people the tools to create stories out of yeah. you know these mundane <laughs> things. That's 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 a very key uh-huh. thing to do. And uh yeah, yep. I'm I'm happy to see that he's he's kept up with that style of writing. This is perfect. And like you're saying, there's questions everywhere, which is Keith Baker. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. All so right. I would check that out. It's on the DMs guild. I think it's four ninety nine and right now it's like the top bestseller. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. All it's right. going to be doing very well. So shall we get into it? I think I'm ready. I'm ready. I have currently open Festivals, Feasts, and Fairs by, by Ashley May. Um, DM's Guild product I talked about last time. I don't know that I'm going to use it yet, but it's going to give me... I've already read through it this morning just to get my brain in the right place for today. <laughs> All right. And I had a little bit of a technical issue, so I'm going to be typing this direction instead of my normal direction. So bear with me a little bit. Boop, 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 doop, doop, doop. All right. So, you so know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was going to say, when, when, when we talked about making an adventure, specifically when we were talking about adventures and um, uh, what what a festival means, right? So I think we should start with, with the festival it says itself. Like, you know, look at the who, the mm-hmm. what, the when, the where. Yes. And the why. Because, you know, as um, part of it, we have to design the festival as well as, um, you know, because we, w- we want that richness there. That's that's one mm-hmm. of the things that's, that's, that's really great is, is, is having that richness as part of your festival experience. Um, right. So we want to make sure and include that. And this is this uh, is good because I was I was thinking about our own holidays, like kind of U.S. holidays, mm-hmm. and yeah. you see the the ones that are seasonal. We talked about yep. those a last time as we were talking about like smaller communities dealing with like harvests or or you know midsummer, uh, New mm-hmm. Year things like that. Um, yeah. We get nationalistic ones. We get our, our patriotic military, you know, Independence Day, Veterans Day, Memorial Day. Um, oh, gosh, I blanked on the third set. <laughs> Those are like the institutional ones. Um, President's Day. No one in a rural community community comes up with President's Day, right? <laughs> it's, it's mandated. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so we get those as well, like times that treaties were signed, major like political events that we want to just remember. Mm-hmm. Um and we also have a few that come up based on individuals who do things that are important. Yeah. So, okay, so a wide uh, let's, range of reasons. We do absolutely, yeah. So let's let's start with the who. Like, what kind of people are we? Is this like, you know, let's look at it and, and go. All right, so is it um, <laughs> time to get your blazers ready for Lasers Day? Um, also, <laughs> to catch up on the chat, uh, Heckna, I did not back Hick Heckna uh jonathan um but i'll have to check it out after this i haven't been super observant on kickstarters lately 
Yeah. Oh, my chat's not loading right. I have to hop back oh. in. <laughs> All right. So let's let's talk about the who. So you know, when, and the reason I'm starting here is because you get you get two different kinds of. Uh, or at least in my mind, I think of, of, of two different kinds of festivals. I think of the festivals mm -hmm. in which, uh, you know, it's you go into a halfling town and they're having like a halfling type festival. So it's all pretty much just halflings in a very halfling village and it's a very halfling feel. So that's mm -hmm. going to talk about how the rest of, of, of the, the festival is going to kind of unroll. And yeah. then you also get the you know the 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 more mixed festival, so like in a little bit bigger town, so maybe it's harvest festival, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you could get you could look at very spiritual festivals and look like you are um, oh Hecna is a carnival based five e expansion. That's... Oh yes, yeah, that uh, was that did very well on Kickstarter. I do want to check that uh, one out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you know, so 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 starting with the who, like it, it could be a religious type of thing, like the um, Uthgart barbarians. There was one where where uh, in fourth edition there was an organized play adventure where uh, you run into the Uthgart barbarians. Uthgart barbarians are some of the barbarians that you might see in the uh, spine of the world, so Ryman of Frostmaid and that type of stuff. But you come during a very oh. important time, and part of that is these various festivals um, that or various various competitions that you would see in normal festivals you know and that's where you see you know the uh the thing where they throw the big log and um sure. you know all that stuff so um so let's start with the who 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 is who? who's throwing this festival not who is it for who who's throwing it who's throwing it um i mean i i kind of want i don't want a somber festival i think i'm interested kind of like you know we could have a big festive one if we're following like yeah. i don't know um Merkel's festivals <laughs> rates. Um, uh, do we could do a deity based one? I think that that could be, and maybe it is one that, while it's mildly deific, it's really like run by the town to get super active. Okay. Um, yeah. So, who so who's a deity who would be up for that? <laughs> well, uh, the the one suggestion that uh, is in the chat is the deity laser. <laughs> Uh, so who 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 would be a worshiper of leisure? I think this is a gnomish, uh, a gnomish colony. No, not colony. A gnomish uh, colony. Yeah, no, I think that's what they call their 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 the plural of gnomish gnomes, their Roman colonies. Um, mm. But I don't like the word colony. Uh, yeah, we, a gnomish uh, greater family, something like that, like. You know, so uh, you know, whatever you call a clan of gnomes, I guess it sure, could be a sure. clan of gnomes. Maybe, maybe they're 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 having a special event, but uh, it is in a it is in a mixed race city. Okay. What do you think? So we got a cosmopolitan aspect to this, but it's focused. It's like a gnomish holiday. Yeah. So this takes place in the gnome gnomish region of Waterdeep. Oh no. Okay, that's great. I'm excited. I just got uh, disaster vibes, but I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. And uh and since we're putting it in Waterdeep, uh it's in celebration of uh one of their saints the uh tall and wise laser. Boom. Oh. <laughs> all right it's a yeah well you know we've actually answered some other questions so what this is a celebration of laser uh the uh win uh, no we haven't uh that's it's a it's a uh, fall festival fall so, festival okay yep yeah. i was i was immediately thinking about how with gnomes we could do something asynchronous like something the rest of the city doesn't expect like it happens every 317 years or <laughs> oh yeah no that's that's perfect so like, you know every every 15 months <laughs> yeah okay yeah no let's figure let's figure something out for that some some weird amount of time every 16th full moon or something like that <laughs> oh i like that yes because then that's right. even hard well I think Forgotten Realms has sorted out the the lunar system, but yeah, but yeah, but I still, like that idea that sometimes there's two in a month, so I can't. Uh, what's going? Yeah, 
Yeah. I like that a lot. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right, so we got the who, what, when, where, and why. All right, so why do they celebrate Laser, uh, the saint, on the 16th full moon? Let's see. There's a bunch of stuff in the chat. Let's see here. Uh, celebrate the extremely tall eyes. They make large flammable statues. Last night, festival didn't let them on fire. I like that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's incredible. All right. So why what 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 why are they celebrating? And then uh how are they celebrating? Let's, yeah, who, what, when, where, why, and how. All right, so what's the why? Let's let's get to the why, how they're lighting effigies. Uh a building building effigies and then what lighting effigies on the last night. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see here. So why? So why? <laughs> what did Saint Laser do for the gnomes? Uh, discovered a new way to band light that allowed them to save their ancestors <laughs> from a dragon from a dragon uh -huh. oh so 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 the effigies are of dragons oh okay and they're uh lit on fire in the last night with uh beams of light shot out of statues of laser Oh wow. Okay, this is this is very cool. So so let's say, you know, in a in a village, you need to make this thing happen. The people can certainly create these effigies, right? But yep. there's got to be someone responsible for that statue and for casting the spell that will light the effigies on fire, right? You need your yeah. your uh your arcane artillerist. Um Oh yeah. <laughs> who is going to, you know, probably can I don't know is it fire bolts? Are they heat beams? Are they just concussive force blasts out of your eyes? Um, so I got a lot of Cyclops. Um, the effigies roast coffee, and they end in a big breakfast celebration. <laughs> and drink all the varieties of coffee. Ooh. Okay, so this this is very good. Um, first of all, this is dynamic. Everyone else in the city is going to go like, "What's happening right now?" Yeah. Um, then all the gnomes are going to be hyper caffeinated afterwards. Yep. <laughs> um, ready to cause some chaos like, because this is a major event. This isn't a small thing. Everyone's no. going to make an effigy that gets burnt down. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and so and. Um... Okay, so do do other other people besides gnomes get involved, or is it just the gnomes? Like, is this is this is this relegated to those who hang out near the Temple of Gond, or it, does this spread across the entire city? Because both have Ooh. interesting aspects, right? Because because in one mm -hmm. aspect, if it stays kind of in a gnomish area of town and around a, the Temple of Gond, then it becomes a site that some people go to visit, and then they go back to their parts of town. And right. uh, you know, and then and then whenever we get to the adventure part, then it's like, oh no, there's something crazy going on in a gnomish quarter, mm -hmm. right? Which I like. That's that's feeling pretty strong here. Like this mm -hmm. is a festival where I think something goes wrong, and I don't know if that's an outside influence messes with things. Could, you know, there's uh -huh. all sorts of stuff that could happen here. So I like it being limited. Um, I don't even do the gnomes like make these effigies in secret. People in the city are like, we can't keep track of that festival. We don't know when it happens. And then just boom, yeah. it starts. Yeah. Um, no, nobody, like nobody but one? gnomes count to higher than 16. So Right. <laughs> <laughs> They're not paying attention. Um, but all these gnome families at night are like, you know, constructing their, their effigies of hay, um, getting ready. Um, it might be a thing where, you know, people from around the city do come to watch, you know, maybe uh -huh. it's, it's a spectator sport for them. Um, yeah. 
but it, it sounds like this is a, a religious festival. So while it's open, um, it is still also specific at the same time. Yeah. For the next, the rival tea base cult tries to foil the coffee roasting. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Uh, focused. I mean, that's, I mean, that's not horrible, right? So the mm -hmm. followers of Gong, Gond, in the city of Waterdeep, uh, celebrate this, this, and it's only a regional thing, right? That's right. Because it is this specific event, so maybe gnomes uh -huh. farther away, yeah, <laughs> haven't had that yeah. experience. Yeah, exactly, and uh, maybe some snooty, some snooty gnomes who are also followers of God. Mm -hmm. uh, but can't grow and evolve with times. <laughs> Are very upset at the spell celebration. Right. Okay, so this is going to be a, an insular. This is going to be a gnome-based divide. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see here. So they're upset at the celebration, uh, and they believe. Uh, coffee drinks come from the Nine Hells. <laughs> Fair enough. So there. I'm gonna jump in, actually. Yes. Yeah. So I, I have a, I have a thought because we're talking about Gond, um, and when I think about Gond and like gnomish creations, those go a couple different ways, right? Gond is a neutral deity, but. Uh -huh. We have our, you know, if we think Dragonlance, we often think Tinker Gnomes. Sometimes we think like Modrons and we get like Mechanis, we get the <laughs> Realm of Perfect Order. Excuse me. You know, we could almost align this on a an order chaos axis and be like, you know, the our coffee friends are are on the side of the chaotic, the wonderful side of of Gon's priesthood. Um, and maybe the, the tea drinkers are more on the orderly side. They want things to be calm. This this experience is pure chaos. We can't let this. Yeah. <laughs> um, could be could be about a divide within uh, the religion of Gond and these gnomes. Yeah. No, I, I, I love that one side of it is very pro, like this chaotic party that they throw. And then <laughs> the older, stodgier gnomes are like, no. No, mm -hmm. this is too frivolous with your <laughs> stuff. This is not not what Gond would want. This is not how we bring order to the planes. <laughs> um, that could be fun, and I like that because that plays into a couple different gnomish archetypes, even. So, yeah. Okay, I like that. This is this is a this is a debate in the inventor community <laughs> among gnomes. <Yeah. those. laughs> it's 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 when the make, maker fair goes wrong. <laughs> oh, <laughs> perfect perfect so this that's good actually too because i mean i know we're kind of focused right here but that gives us an idea of what kind of things other things would be in this festival right um yeah it is the maker fair it's got you know this huge event and once that's done it's almost got like a science fair you wander around you see what people are building um, and specifically because of this festival maybe they are like those wonderful those like chaotic style um, you know, you start seeing the, the, the mechanisms that go wrong, <laughs> but they show that there could be cool things. You know, this thing is going to let blast fireworks into the sky and it does one. And then it's just like smoke comes out and you're like, well, yeah. maybe next year, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Like it, it, in writing this adventure, you could probably come up with like, you know, 10 booths, right? And and each mm -hmm. of those booths is a, a science experiment or some kind of tchotchke <laughs> that people are trying to yeah. to unload on you. And, you know, you get the one that's that like you, this is for shooting fireworks anywhere. <laughs> oh, well, you know, right? uh, th this is for reheating your food very quickly. And it's a box and they toss the food in. They, they, they hit some buttons on it. And it goes, 
you know, and then you pull it out and then the, the thing is alive, right? You know, it's like, oh, almost there, almost got it. So yeah, right. like things like that, right? Ooh, I love that because you can write those in and then at the same time, you could also build in like a, a mechanism wild surge table that you could, you know, if you pick up something here and you use it, <laughs> there's a chance something totally different happens, uh, which would yeah. be fun for a one-off. You know, those are all like one use festival items anyways. <laughs> yeah, and we talked about use, the one use festival items being like a kind of fun little added bonus. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we have our we have our antagonists. We have our uh, kind of our protagonist. We don't have a, a primary personality yet on either side, no. but that's okay. Uh, I do love the the science fair aspect and digging into it and thinking about our final conflict, whatever that final conflict yeah. would be. I think um, I think. I think people should get bonuses for using things that they have purchased at this science fair. Right. I agree. Mm -hmm. Like all these, all these, all these weird inventions are for sale. Um, and you know, and they can be negotiated on prices, but you know, <laughs> what if somebody picks up the microwaving box and they use it for, for something and it brings like, mm -hmm. you know, may maybe they, you know, toss like a mug in there or something and it brings the mug to life and then they can use that as a distraction in the final fight or something uh -huh. weird like uh -huh. that, right? Uh, that would be really yeah, that, fun. That'd be really fun. <laughs> um, I, I love this. I, I, I like this plan. I think that's a great mechanism for the, the whole thing. It gives it a cool theme. Like I know that I'm in a weird space. I mean, this yeah. festival, and when this festival ends, you know, those items aren't going to be, I'm not going to use them going forward, maybe. Um, but for now, I get to be part of this wonderful fun, even if I am just a, a barbarian mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, who doesn't normally do this kind of thing. Yeah, so we need like a table of strange inventions mm -hmm. with a, a wild magic-esque table. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. My latest game, I rolled the wild surge table one time, just one time, all the effects that are possible, all of them. And of course, the player gets to do like 40, 10 extra points of lightning damage, kill the thing in one hit. I was, oh, they were man. very excited, but like I was hoping for chaos and when, they got when, effectiveness. <laughs> when, when do you trigger wild surges? Um, this one is, this was a planar trait. Um, oh, okay. So I decided if anyone cast a first level spell, there was a chance that a, a wild surge would happen. Um, yeah. And if specifically a wild magic sorcerer cast a spell, then it would definitely happen. <laughs> nice. So nice. this this one, I think, cast one spell that didn't work, and then the second one was like, there it is. <laughs> it was <laughs> nice. a very effective nice. Scorching Ray. <laughs> yeah, that's something I always kind of struggle with, is, is trying to decide when do wild surges happen, because they don't really codify mm -hmm. it in this edition. So, they don't. Uh, I've just kind of gone with the fourth edition variation, which is on a one in a 20, the wild magic happens. Oh, nice. Um, so anyway. So it's 10%. That's good. There was a, a third level, third edition had a spell, I think, that you could would automatically trigger a surge or something like that. And I miss those days when a player could decide, let's get wild. <laughs> um. But yeah, making sure that we know exactly how that's going to work in this yeah. game is going to be important, right? When is this mechanism yeah. going to misfire? And exactly. <laughs> so, chaos. yeah, well, uh, very codified, uh, uh, very structured mm -hmm. version of wild magic triggers. Yeah. Since this is an adventure. Okay, so let's let's think about this festival. Let's think about our players, right? They're going to approach this festival, and some are going to be excited. And some yes. are not. <laughs> right. You know, there's stuff going on. Oh, that stuff's all broken. It's not working right. You know, they, I am playing lawful neutral. This is kind of gross. Um, I'll get into it for a day or so because it is kind of neat, right? We're going to make it kind of right. wonderful. So we do want to get yeah. in. Um, yeah. But I, our players might struggle if they have to take the side of chaos or order, um, you know, so... So I want to think about that as we're looking at, like, what is the the final boss? What is the climax of this? Are they battling mm -hmm. against the, the, the tea folks? Or do are, they find yeah, corruption they... in the crowd? Or is it a third party? Yeah, or yeah, or is it a third party trying to pit them against each other? Right. And, you know, and that's, and that's kind of a, I, I think that's a cool idea, but I also like the idea of the 
uh, you know, the more old school gnomes being very upset about this as well. So I, I, I could go either way, but I do, th- I do love the idea of this, this kind of, uh, commulating in a, in our, our heroes facing off against like some kind of weird mech. I think it sure. has to be like yeah. a weird oh, yeah. mech that mal- malfunctions, but all the time, mm-hmm. but it malfunctions in ways that are benefit beneficial for it. So like, it gets yeah. a it gets like a um an action on level t- or on a initiative twenty, and that's just a randomly rolled action on this mm-hmm. you know on this special critical misfires table for uh-huh. for this creature. It just does weird stuff like you know uh you know oh all of a sudden it uh, for this round it has a plus two to its AC because it reconfigured its armor. Oh, uh, a piece <laughs> fell off of it, so mm-hmm. it has, uh, you know, 10 extra feet of movement this round and doesn't provoke opportunity attacks, you know, things like that. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. it's just this junker, and then as you kind of go through the fight, it changes based on, like, damage and these weird rolls and that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. That would be really fun. Um, I, I wouldn't want to exactly jump in and, and copy a theme from uh, Waterdeep Dragon Heist, yeah. Um, but there is the rogue machine um, idea that we could take. You know, maybe the orderly gnomes are trying to sabotage this event, make it go wrong, so it doesn't go like worldwide. But they went too far, you know, or the the third party is going farther than they wanted. So they want they actually need help getting it stopped as well. <laughs> maybe they're guilty, okay. but not fully guilty of exactly the full adventure. They just wanted the yeah. effigies to not light up or. Okay, cool. Yeah, so let's take it. Let's take a look at this. So we want our intro scene. Uh, intro scene. So this is getting our players into it. We need our um, patron, mm-hmm. who is who is getting, uh, who is hiring them, who is, or how are they getting pulled into this? Because the patron could be the festival itself. It doesn't have to be a specific mm-hmm. person. How are they getting pulled in? Yeah. We need um, the initial investigation. <laughs> uh, uh, I just thought about like you being in Waterdeep at the time, and the warning bells start ringing. And you're like, "What is? That's a weird pattern. What's what does that bell pattern mean?" And they're like, "It's the festival. The festival's like get everyone to the Gnomish Choir. <laughs> everyone starts running down. They know everything's going to be on fire soon. <laughs> that's awesome." That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's chaos. It's chaos for the rest of the town. They're like, oh, no, it's this Gnomish oh, yeah. festival again. Oh, exactly. Man, it's chaos. Uh, last so year it... or whenever this happened, you know, they've got these old stories from the last few years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when the gnome sabotaged the festival, sabotaged by the Beastie Boys plays, because this adventure is directed by J.J. Abrams. Thanks, Jonathan. I mean, <laughs> darn right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, in, in, in we decide we're going to have a twist where the uh, stuck up gnomes, we'll figure out what to call them later. Uh, stuck up gnomes. Uh, they are, uh, they planned to foil the fest, but the hired right. third party is going too far. Um, Get to that feel of some like there, there's some spy movies that have this, and I like that. Like, ooh, yeah. you're bad, but you're not the bads. <laughs> exactly, you, exactly. You're right. an enemy, but <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. So, and then there's a further further investigation. Mm-hmm. And now both sides have some information that you're going to need, which I like. Suddenly, our characters have to interact with these two pretty vastly separated groups. Um, uh-huh. I get to hear their viewpoint, which is cool whatever that uh, let's is see here. yeah <laughs> and then uh final conflict uh so here here's a thought right um i i like the idea of uh the players having to so i'm not gonna i'm gonna try not to spoil too much but there was a certain episode of a certain western that that recently brought uh, uh on television that brought two uh different groups of people together to help fight a giant third creature and these two two groups uh did not get along following and uh so 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 what you can kind of do is you can say all right well here's what we found out now we need to get you guys to work together and you know it it can become one of those things where you have to do like skill checks and work with certain people to help build contraptions Mm -hmm. and then depending on 
the 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 type of 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 able to get these two angry parties to work together, the more advantages you'll have in the final conflict. Ooh, so I like so that. like if you can get these these chaotic gnomes and these very structured gnomes to work together, you 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 exactly Jonathan, you can you can take uh you you could take this contraption and we'll go back to the microwave box. Well, maybe the microwave mm-hmm. box didn't work, but one of the old school gnomes, the the, the more stuck up gnomes, they take a look at it and they're able to adjust it. And now mm-hmm. it becomes something where you set it as an action and you put it somewhere. And then as a bonus action, like you can trigger it and it'll explode in a 10 foot square for 2D 10 sure. damage or something, right? Something like right. that where, where you take these weird janky things that have some effect in the final combat, uh, but you codify it and make it more structured so it's it's very mm-hmm. much a benefit. And like, you know, you have to make like three or four of these items or you don't have to. You can try to make like three or right. four of these items. Yeah. Right, but maybe you want the chaos. Maybe they're like, okay, well, I can turn this item, which seems fun and interesting, into a, a very simple control rod, which when I activate it, it will get rid of one of the, the boss's abilities or, oh, you yeah. know, um, give it give it restrained for a turn or something. Something that doesn't feel as cool would be super effective. Uh, <laughs> but maybe right. I want the chaos. So now we, we allow the players to decide, like, do their yeah. parties want this like structured approach to the final boss or this chaotic or somewhere in the middle? That's fun. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we certainly oh. need to have an NPC on the order side who is going to be able to to make these things happen. He's our or or they they are our primary contact. Yeah. Um and we need that on the chaos side too. Um I think it'd be interesting. I I haven't thought about this uh, this spellcaster who does have to burn all the effigies down, right? Or is it a machine? Yeah. Maybe the inventor of that machine. I don't know. <laughs> maybe maybe it's a uh, every year or every time they have it, the winner of the science fair gets to invent the way of lighting the effigies. Oh, that's very good. <laughs> <laughs> that's very good. Because that person also gives us a target to sabotage, right? Team order yeah. would try to track that person down, and right, probably the thing they want to stop is they want to make the effigies not burn. I mean, that's that's a pretty devastating yeah. blow to all these yeah, gnomish cause, families, right? Because then the, their effigies don't get burned, and the celebration mm-hmm. doesn't happen, and the coffee doesn't get roasted, and then right. breakfast is ruined, and then brunch is ruined for those <laughs> who slept through breakfast because they were mm-hmm. up too late partying due to all the fires. Right. And meanwhile, if all that happens, these these uh, team orders just sitting there sipping their tea, uh, watching the whole thing happen and go like, oh, well, that's too bad. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. Oh, we got a we got a lot here. <laughs> I'm liking this. <laughs> yeah, this is a This is a good setup. Like, I, I don't know exactly <laughs> where we're headed, but I love everything. I would play this adventure already. <laughs> yeah, this is such a fun setup. I'm uh, I. Yeah. All right. So, okay. So we need, we need our patron. Let's think of, let's go back mm-hmm. to our patron. All right. So okay. our patron. Oh, no, actually what intro scene or patron first? Let's do patron first. Sure. Um, let's see here. So what's a fun gnomish name? Uh, I usually just mash a bunch of consonants together and then toss mm-hmm. like two or three vowels in there somewhere. Uh, but that's always, but that's, but that's, but yeah, but that's, that's hard for people. So, um, you know, maybe My, something uh, like, like, like yeah. Caldwell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think about my, my last gnomish character was Whisk Glitch Spring. And it was just like, boom, boom, boom like stick these. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to come but, up with gnome names for me. I don't know why. <laughs> I like Caldwell. All right, let's go with Caldwell. Very good. All right, so. A little bit about Caldwell. Okay. He's mm-hmm. a middle-aged gnome. Yeah. Uh, loves the festival. Right? Because it uh, brings more people to Gond, right? I mean, that's the, yeah. the real point of this. Um, is this a is this a part of either faction, or is this a neutral, like, arbitrator? Uh, Caldwell? Yeah. Caldwell is, is Caldwell part of the... Team Chaos, or...? <laughs> he is, he's on Team Chaos. Okay. Team Chaos, Yeah. Yeah, because he, he welcomes the adventures. Why does he welcome the adventures? Because something went wrong. What went wrong? Uh, the gnome, oh, the gnome who won last year's science fair has gone missing. Oh, okay. All right. So we've got a, a search that is unrelated. Oh, 
ooh, they have a track record. They've won a couple times. Team Order knows that they might win again, right? Uh -huh. And we don't yeah. want that. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm on team order today. This is look at this room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Uh, the science fair winner from last year has gone missing. And, Caldwell Banker, Gnome Tinkerer. <laughs> yeah, Caldwell <laughs> hires the party to find the gnome. Okay. Um, the winner, and the winner has a history. Uh, right. disappearing but just before the event well, this is good because obviously they just, the and, subject are the people at the festival yeah yeah suspects it's like <laughs> right like like oh no he's he does this every year uh mm -hmm. well you just have to find him that's all you have yeah. to do and then you uncover this 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 greater mystery okay so i like that so um, maybe we tr we try to find them, we track them down, and I like the idea that uh, they they are not there for the festival as it's beginning. So our players get to experience the whole thing. They're talking to people, they're searching uh -huh. around. And they can't find them by the time that it is like go time. You know, it's it's laser time. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm I'm picturing this festival lasting over a couple of days, and I'm in, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm picturing like the days leading up to the oh you know like one or two days leading up to the effigy burning. So we bring them in on like day one, and so they have like two or three days to the effigy burning, which means mm -hmm. we can do some cool stuff. But this is my thought. This is my thought process. It could be totally different sure, if sure, you sure. want. But but I love the idea because then that gives them time to kind of explore the science fair. And get mm -hmm. to th then we can do some of those fun like games that we talked about before, where it's like, yeah. oh hey, if you buy a dozen tickets, you can get you know ten plays on this game, and you have to pop thirteen balloons with these darts mm -hmm. that are loaded, right? And so you know, and and, <laughs> and 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 then we could do some of that fun stuff where they get chintzy prizes too, right? And maybe mm -hmm. those chintzy prizes have uses that we haven't even thought of yet, right? right. And so it, it, that was kind of my thought, but um, I'm happy to. Yeah. Uh, uh, they do. Ooh. They 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 burn the uh, the effigies with uh, beams of light, which they have named yeah. lasers after their inventor, Saint Laser. Right. So so are you envisioning the the effigy burning as part of the finale? Does it come right before? Is it the epilogue? I think, I, I, I think it's I think it's I think it's the the finale, right? Okay. So that happens, and then there's like one more day after that, but it's kind of like it all builds up to this big. And then the party kind of goes on, and chaos happens usually while the ah. effigy is burning, mm -hmm. and then, and then, and then it's just kind of like the next day is the the breakfast, the brunch. You know, that's when uh, the cooking competitions happen. That's when Chef Albert D comes to town and says, "Hey, sure. I need some X beak eggs," <laughs> and uh, you know that Perfect. type of thing. And that that that, that was my <laughs> thought of the flow. And, and I mean, if you have another idea, I'm totally into it. No, 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 I like that idea that the the warning bells in the city then don't ring on those first couple days right it's where we're hired we're brought in oh yeah but like there's a moment on that final day and it's the moment when like we have explored we found the 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 missing gnome or something we've learned there's a bigger thing going on we're talking to both sides we're asking all our suspects but the event is coming closer and we it haven't is. solved it we haven't found this mech by then the warning bells start going off and that's actually the sign that <laughs> chaos is coming <laughs> Yeah, the the warning bells start going off every hour for, uh, what's a weird arbitrary number like, uh, <laughs> like eight, right? <laughs> uh, -huh. uh, the the warning bells start to go off every hour for the last eight hours before the effigy burning. Right, so we gotta let the city know just in case we might burn it down. <laughs> yeah, um, and so you know, and and this is this is the time where a lot of like people, like non gnomish people, uh, unless they're really like into it, they they avoid the gnomish uh, area of town. They're like, okay, mm -hmm. this is when things get real weird. 
Uh, you know, last year we saw a strange three-legged race in potato sacks while everyone was naked and covered with um, slime. It it was it gets really weird, right? Mm-hmm. You, and you hear yeah. this when you talk to other locals, and each of them have different stories that are just that weird about once the bells start ringing <laughs> to uh-huh. to avoid the gnome start a town. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, right. And they're all kind of wondrous. And, and I, I want them all to, you want the players to have that feeling of like, I kind of, I kind of want to go see that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I, but also yeah, like, right. I kind of don't. <laughs> like, do I want to, do I want to be part of this? Like, mm-hmm. oh man. Uh. <laughs> yeah. And I, I like that idea. You know, um, we're from Portland, the, uh, the, the annual naked bike ride. I'm always like, <laughs> Absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like the the county fair leads up to Burning Man, all <laughs> taking place during the Portland uh, naked bike ride. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, <laughs> but just this like atmosphere of just strange inventions and just I don't exactly know like weird science at the same time. Like that's yeah. great. <laughs> oh man, we could we could come up with so much cool stuff to like mm-hmm. put in the background and talk about like you know in the box text specifically right. like oh as you're in the middle of this conversation a uh, a giant leg steps down in front of you and as you trace it up you find a gnome on 30 foot tall stilts. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just stay away, stay away. <laughs> uh, like, they are towering over your head, and mm-hmm. uh, you know the the really, uh, and you start to sneeze as their feather boa brushes against your nose from thirty feet up there. <laughs> it's amazing, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. Like, okay. So I I think we've nailed the events. We got atmosphere. We got tons of great stuff. We've got this this patron. Um, yeah. Now it's just like threading the needle through this, and where where are our players heading in between? Like, what are what are our plot beats? Yeah, um, yeah. So we have inventor goes missing, always does. Um, always, but it's does. getting pretty close to time. They haven't set their booth yeah. up. Um, yeah, usually, usually, usually by now they have their booth set up at least, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're we're, they're used to them disappearing, but uh, you know, <laughs> this right. one's a little weird. This one's a little weird. Um, his his uh his 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 lab was a little extra messy this time, <laughs> right? And so uh so you the players go to explore it, um mm-hmm. see if they can find anything. Maybe it's come but you know they've come back. They're doing some stuff now, but they're nowhere to be found. But then what? What else do we yeah. do? We find signs of of. Do we find signs of a, a gnome napping? <laughs> um. Do yeah. we find uh, strange gears laying on the floor? Do we get signs that there is some kind of creature? I think um, so. I think so. Right? Like, um, okay. I th- let's. Ooh, you know, you know who who they like to throw at people in Waterdeep as kind of thugs is is a uh, kinku. So oh, yeah. what if what if the what if they find a they find a kinku feather? Ooh, I like that because now we're going somewhere else. We're like, wait, well, uh, yeah. who? Uh, what? <laughs> um, that yeah, would be a good they've... third party for sure. And uh, let's name this inventor. Uh, uh, Steve. All right. Steve. <laughs> okay. Okay. This this will be a placeholder name, Steve. Uh, yeah, in yeah. Steve's uh, lab. Um, and well, it sure it shouldn't be Dexter then if you're going to be calling it. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Dexter's lab. All right, they find okay. a kinku feather. And that's one that's that's like an obvious clue. Like so mm-hmm. that's like a easy that's a DC ten, right? Pretty easy right. to find. Sure. Um, um and then we can do one for like DC fifteen, DC uh twenty, and then yeah. And then like we can find clues at those various levels. The kinku mm-hmm. feather is essentially a freebie. Yeah. And then we have to figure out where they go from there. Um, I do think, however, we are going to have to continue this discussion uh, in two weeks. What? what? Yeah, I know. Okay. All right. <laughs> I know. I know. We got we got so very into into building out this this adventure that uh, time kind of got away from us a little bit, and uh, so. Ne- Next week we are going to uh to be reviewing the 
uh, latest book from Wizards of the Coast. So make sure and swing by to hear more about Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. That should mm-hmm. be a ton of fun. Uh, additionally, uh, we will be, oh, will we be streaming tomorrow? Will you be back in town or are you still on vacation? I will be. I've got class tomorrow. So we're, we're headed oh. back uh, in the morning. And Perfect. <laughs> yep. All right. Sounds good. Then uh, tomorrow night at uh, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we will be digging into the feats. Uh, as well as next Sunday, we'll, like I said, oh, I already said that. So we'll be talking about a book, and then the following mm-hmm. Sunday, we'll wrap up this adventure probably, and then uh, if we have some time, start building the encounter. Then we can kind of look at December and decide yeah. if we want to finish the festival encounter then, and so on and so forth. So right. uh, hope to see you guys next week. Uh, think about themes for the de- month of December. We want a theme to build an adventure and think about building adventures with you all. Mm-hmm. Uh, make sure to festivals. like... We've done spooky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's 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 more. good for de- what's good for December? Uh, make sure to like, follow, subscribe, and uh, Rich, do you got anything coming up that they uh, the folks need to check out? Oh, I think my final twine puzzle for Mission Catastrophe is going to launch tomorrow as that Kickstarter launches. So be on the lookout for that. That game is fun as well, but my twine game. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, uh, I think that's the big thing right now. Yeah. Cool. How about you? Uh, Where are they going to find uh, you? Uh, yeah, I'll have my DJ stream on Thursday night at uh, 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And um, yeah, ho- I think holiday-themed adventure seems to be where we're leaning right now for, for next month. But uh, yeah, we want we want to come up with some options. There's a lot of cool things around December. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, yeah, so check me out there at D- uh, Dread Pirate Rabbits. And uh, I think that's it. So thanks, All everyone. Right. And we'll see you all next time.